All right, guys, we uncovered more stuff the Stankies did to the ice cream truck while they had it. We got the transmission fixed, then we found out there was a problem with the air compressor. So we're gonna take you through that air compressor and uh, rebuilding the air compressor, putting it back in there. Plus we got more live action from down under in Australia. Uh, get out there, support us, because we sent Ricky down there, uh, help cover that stuff with Harry, and it's been awesome. I really want to go to this event next year just from watching the coverage of it. More coverage of that today, and hey, get over to the website. The best part about Sick the Mag is everything comes in a cool bag. So go grab some merch off the website, and it'll come to you in a cool bag just like this. This one's actually going down under. This is going to Australia. So I won't show you their name, but hey, oh, well, I'll just tell you Gavin Taylor. I got your package and it's on the way to you, but hey, we're gonna get a package to you too. Get over to the merch site, grab something. Thanks for watching, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, you just witnessed history. <clears throat> That's what I say. Okay, so this right here, all these little pieces and all these parts here are the air compressor, electric air compressor out of the barbecue truck. We are blaming this on Rick Stanky for the transmission failure and for this because they used it for how many days? Like two? Like two days or something. They broke it on like the second or third day. Ruined our truck. So we're not gonna let them drive it ever again, I don't think, but maybe. So now that they blew this up, I'm gonna rebuild it. So is what happened is they overloaded the truck with too much stuff and body weight and everything and they wrecked the little reed valve broke off so then the air would compress from the little piston with the umbrella seal on it and the air would never build pressure and push into the air tanks it would just bypass and go out the back of the cylinder right here where there's a little air cleaner. So right now, we're gonna rebuild this and then we're gonna send them the bill for the repairs, which is like, I don't know, a thousand bucks or something, I think. So um, I'm gonna put a new rod in it. So we're putting a stroker kit in it with a new uh, umbrella seal. As you can see, that's what it'll look like once it's shoved into the cylinder and it will work again. So we're gonna put the rod back in. So we have to put the rod through, what do we wanna call this, the block? Uh, yeah, this is the, like the block. Cause that'd be the head. Yeah, that's the, well, this is the, the block with a, let's call it a sleeve cylinder thingy. So this guy doesn't matter. But you gotta get the little umbrella. That's gotta go on after this goes on. What are you talking about? Well, you gotta put this Allen in. So this has to be in there. Oh! Yeah, that's half the Son of a bitch. We gotta put the rod in the crank first, numb right. nuts. All right, now. Okay, good eye. How's this one? Yup, little short one with some blue Loctite. You gotta hold it. Right here is the washer for it. And this is the proper tool to hold the crank while we it's gonna be the other way. torque the connecting rod, the stroker rod to it. Then we put that on, then we put that on. All right, this is my first time, so I don't really know. It's kind of like the converter video where it's a little bit of trial and error. Okay. 
gonna put the a bit in put the our keys. put our block. We don't lock take these. these they have lock, lock washers on them. But they're lock tighted. No, they're they corrosion. Mm -hmm. They're aluminum and it's corrosion. I see blue. That's definitely lock tight. I think you're full of shit. But whatever. Full of dick. So while the master there is putting that together, I'll pull out the broken reed valve, which is that, getting replaced with that. Everything is very, very precise and we are in a um, a clean environment right here to put well, this, this all back together. This air compressor is basically an SMX. It's not. It's, it's like pretty a, close. It's little. It's the SMX of air pumps. It's the junior, junior of air pumps. cylinder on it and we don't have a ring compressor it's Bob who's gonna force it this is probably not how you do it but since we don't have the correct tool this is how we're doing it Man, this is gonna have so much blow by if you fuck this up. Good commentary. Just saying. guys going on right this, the and rectangle this matches with the rectangle this one goes in here like that this one goes which way Well, the broken piece was sitting on this. So which side was broken? That was... That was the compression side. That side? That's no good. The exhaust side was broke. So you could take it in, but it couldn't put it out. You got the schematic? No. No schematic. There might be one with the rebuild kit. Right, I'm pretty sure it goes this way because one is in one is out and if this one is cut down in to open it would seal on there and this one can't go down so it has to fall up into this to open so that's my story and I'm sticking to it And there's that. So this should go on like that. Yeah, no schematic. So hopefully we're winging it. Hopefully you know what you're talking. Do you about. have um a battery to fire this up and see if it works? Is there torque specifications on this? I think probably the same one that went on the crank. <laughs> I wouldn't murder it, but we just need some power to see if it we are using does little, its job. A little palm ratchet too, so it kind of helps with that over tightening. This thing weight is heavy. Mm -hmm. It's an SMX, dude. 
That's good. So, power. Power, let's see if it works. Is this where you put like the, the cool music in right now and make it all suspenseful? <laughs> see if it really, really works. So this. Here, you hold that one. I'll put this one. <laughs> oh, there's no, dude, there's no relay in here. Oh. We're gonna work. Who took the relay out? I don't know. Is the relay still in here? Okay. Uh, we got to return to our regularly scheduled program. No, this is our... We have to go to a commercial break. I'm sorry, that's what it is. Look, oh, the Look at the term terms on that thing. All right, so... All right, got that. Here we go. Is this a ground trigger or a power trigger? I don't know what the fuck it is. Oh. oh. Whoa, we're gonna lose it. <laughs> Is it pumping? I don't All know. The check it's kicking on too. Yeah. It sounds way better than it did before. Because before it sounded like it had a rod hanging out of it. All right. And our little cooling fan. Goes back on like so. So I think we're back in business. That's pretty cool one now. That was so cool. Now we know how to rebuild a air zenith. What if air ride pump? What if over here fucks up? Well, it's not going to. <laughs> and if it does, then we throw it away and get another one for. What was it, 350 bucks or something? Yeah, that, something around there, 360 or something. Okay. Uh, the, call it intake, should be pointing the opposite way. We were excited to take it apart and then they don't really know how we took it well, apart. I didn't, someone else took it apart, I just put it together the way it, kind of look like it should have been, but just needs to be turned around, which is no big deal. I didn't take it apart, but I think I'm figuring it out. Old grumpy there that just slammed the door and took it apart. And it should be all set. So what are we doing for a filter on this, Bob? Make it. Out of what? Whatever you can. I think you overest my ability to just make a filter. Well, let's see what you can do. Can you weld some filter material? Um, what part did you make it when you understand? Well, I don't really know what to make a filter out of. Well, that's the problem, is it won't go on it. Why can't you just hook up a hose to it and make it remote? Well, probably. But the hose probably won't go on it. There you go. It'd have to be like a banjo. Ah, uh, 
uh, where are we? Day four, drive day. So uh, today we're at Christie's Museum in Tokemore. This is a cool uh, old museum that's been here for about 15 years. Old George has restored everything himself. He's 78 years old, going on 18 years old. He's a weapon of bloke. We, when we checked out the route, we come and met him and he's the most nicest bloke I've ever met in, his lo in my life. I said, we're coming here. He goes, anything you just need, helped us out. So thanks to him. Uh, I'd also like to say a big thanks to our new American friends that have uh, sent messages and thanked us and uh, everything. The support has been amazing. Tom, Ricky, uh, Luke, you know, from Sick the Mag. Um, this is a great collaboration and I hope we're showing you a little bit different side of Australia um, and all the stuff we get up to over here. It is a bit more relaxed, it is a bit more loose than a normal one, but uh, I don't think you'll find anyone's having a bad time. Today's going to be a killer day. We've got two museums, a very old country pub we're going to go to for lunch, and then we're going to cruise back to Echuca on the Murray River, which is uh, a beautiful spot. We'll get some good footage from there, so stay tuned for today. It's going to be a cracker. Cheers. I am Brody from Bunyip, and this is my little broken Corolla. Um, CA18 powered, sort of, so I'm running now on three cylinders and water, but um, it's, been, it's been pretty hard. First day issues, wideband controller issues, and then I've lifted the head. There's a lot of water in bores that shouldn't be, um, but it's still running, <laughs> just. So we're going to keep pushing on and hopefully band-aid it from here. I've had it for 15 years something like that always progressively getting a little bit better and i've done a few of the other dragon drives in it and done pretty well in the past but yeah this year is uh not not my year <laughs> trying to find a workshop after we leave here and seeing if i can borrow some tools and probably look at pulling the head off and fixing it if we can it's pretty hard to find head gaskets for these things so it's made it made it tricky but maybe some more tension and go from there. What are we looking for, Dave? Oh, I've just seen a set of semi slick, old semi slicks on some rims here. Just never know. You never, never know. know. Good assortment of yeah, bits and pieces, lead. that's for sure. I just know all where the fits to go with it. For, just for your information, yeah. these are 1982 cast. They're off a Ford XE ESP, and they're actually individually numbered. That, that's rim number 38. Yeah. And the next one down Which is will have numbers there. as well. And their second batch, because the way they're machined here, the first batch, have, they're rounded off there, and these second lot are actually machined all the way in. So, Do you work in the factory? No, I'm just a lunatic uh, that collects uh, old junk. <laughs> See, this one's a later model that doesn't match. Oh, it's a different yep, one. Yeah, this one's made right? in 1990. So, so it's not yeah, it's still a and that one's just got the ROH casting. <laughs> that one would have been cast in New Zealand. This one oh. Australian. Really? Yep. You do know some shit, Denny he Dave. Does. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, we're from the Mornington Peninsula. This is our 1984 Spanmore hearse based on an XF Falcon station wagon. We've had it around five or six years. It was a bit rough when we got it. Um, got it registered, it's been on the road for a few years now. Um, it's basically still all standard. We just sort of thought we'd bring it out for this event as a bit of a laugh. We have got faster cars, but not something that I want to spend eight hours a day in driving around, so this is more comfortable. And just easy to live with on this sort of event. What kind of reactions are you getting? Oh, it turns a lot of heads. <laughs> some people find it funny, some people get a little bit upset when they see it on the road, which is understandable. But um, yeah, generally people sort of understand that it's not too serious and it's good to basically save an old hearse. Racing's been fairly uneventful, we're not very fast. I think first day we ran a 22.40 and then yesterday in the 8th we went 12.40 so it's getting quicker but um, I might, might pull the air cleaner out of it at Heathcote and see if we can pick up a little bit but uh, other than that it's not going to go very fast maybe we'll get an 18.
checkpoint today was um, Blighty Pub. For you Americans, our pubs are like your bars you have over there. It's the Australian way, probably like the American way. You, <coughs> you boys are a bit like us, you're rednecks and all that. They call us bogans or whatever, but that's, that's what they do in Australia. So after a hard day's work, you go to pub, get a good solid feed and, uh, and have, have a beer with it. So every place I've picked is a small country business and I'm trying to give them two months worth of money in one day. That's all the places I've picked, the museums, the stuff that are in little country areas that are remote. I've tried to build up the community because I'm a country boy myself. So I've tried to support them all and everyone's been great. Uh, next we're on to a uh, really brand new museum. There's a lot of cool stuff in it and a lot of Australian cars and buses and trucks. You, you, it's different to your American stuff so you'll really like it. So uh, everyone's going well. I don't think anyone's broken down yet. So we'll, uh, we'll keep going. We'll have a good day. Hey, I'm Dylan. Uh, this is my HQ and uh, we're doing the hard ass 1000 and uh, we're loving it. It's a um, got a 440 cube LSX block uh, with a three and a half Whipple glide uh, fabricated base products nine inch. We enjoy doing drag and drive events and we're here to sink some beer and uh, make some new mates so yeah. Probably been building the car for probably seven years I reckon now. Um, good project between me and my old man. He's um He's been really, really heavily involved in the car and um, he's done an awesome job trying to get the car ready. Um, helping me race in it, but also um, building it. And he's a panel beater by trade, so um, all them straight lines that you see is uh, courtesy, courtesy of him. So um, yeah, but um, last drag challenge in October last year was the first sort of big public debut that we had for the car. Um, we uh, went into the 950 bracket class and it sort of happened to be pretty perfect for how the car was set up at the time and uh, so we won that class last year um, it was very consistent it went like you know we were doing one and done sort of passes every track and it was running 950s 952s and maybe a 954 here and there so um, yeah that was awesome to go and do that and get a I don't know a good public feedback about the car I guess um, yesterday uh, we were at Wilby um, the car went, uh, it, it was hard to hook up for everyone, all the big power cars, but um, the, car, the, the track uh, hooked up at the end of the day um, and we ended up going to 622, which was, I was really happy with that. Um, we've got some more boost in it now, so uh, we've just got the tuner online, um, yeah, sorting some things out and uh, playing around with it and it ended up going 120 to the 8th, so I was happy with that and um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what it does at Heathcote when, when uh, the track turns it on. Ah, well, Dicko, Dicko's been talking uh, a bit of trash about kicking the footy or a bit of shit, as they say. So the young bloke's called him out. So we're about to uh, have the footy kick off. 50 bucks bet. I've got 50 on Dicko, but the young bloke might tail him up. So we'll see what happens here. Hey! Hey! That's You're hundred. done, bud. You are done. Uh oh. You're in trouble now, bud. Come on, Dicko! Oh! That's a goal! I feel like a bully now. Let that be a lesson to you, Cooper. <laughs>
Hey Jay, what are you doing here by the side of the road? Um, there's an old saying that if you play silly games, you win silly prizes, and mine would be a broken diff right now. So I think I'm going to try and limp back into Daniloquin and find another diff and see if we can get this heap of shit going again. I think when I interviewed you outside that pub the other day in the rain, you said people wonder how this diff has lasted this long. Oh, well, Harry gets his wish, so he wanted this diff for the Harry's Hall of Fame, he reckons. So he finally gets to have a broken, full exploded diff that should have been blown to pieces years ago. So I guess being a tow vehicle, fully loaded, all the shit everywhere in it, eskies, everything, all that. And being on the brake was probably a bit too much for it. <laughs> so I'm going to make some phone calls and try and find something to fix this heap of shit. So. And then we can break the beams back at Heathgate and then I'll fucking explode another one. <laughs> Not as bad as I thought. It's just if I'm on and off the throttle, it's sort of locking up and then unlocking. Sort of keep your eye out for Harry. So it might be a roll pin, might be a gearbox. Break the dick. Yeah, you got one. I might be able to help you out. What do you need? I've got a Ford Explorer 8.8. .8. And I've got a thousand dollars for a dip. What? What? Tell me what's in there now. Ford Explorer 8.8. .8. Explorer. Ford Explorer. Ford Explorer 8.8 .8 disc brake. Should all be disc brake. Yeah, he's got one. He does. Yeah. You go and look, check if you got it. Call me back. I'll wait here. All right. Talk to you shortly. Oh, Cheers, mate. Bye. Just a friend, yeah. <laughs> yep. He's going to fill a bottle of gas. He's going to check it and send me photos of it for you. This is just like our 50s style automotive museums. Like the same style, all the fuel pumps, a lot of the same cars, just a lot more Australian cars. I like the Monaro, Monaro coupes. The, um, the XA coupe 
I prefer an XB, but that's close enough. But yeah, everything in here is cool. I still have no clue what I'm looking at. <laughs> There's a purple color over there somewhere that I really like. Um, and a couple of falcons in here that look really nice too. So yeah, we're having a great time. You've been brainwashed into this barracult. Oh God, Dave is anything that's oddball, he's gonna pick it up. So we're gonna, we don't, we, we don't really stand out here with a barra and a panel van, but we'll stand out at home with it. He'll be the cream of the crop. <laughs> are you gonna take that thing back home? Yes, we are taking it back home. Uh, we talked about leaving it here for another year so we could do this event again next year, but we fell in love with the car too much, so it has to come home ASAP. Um, and then hopefully we'll pick up something else for next year. Oh, hopefully you... a wagon so we can bring more friends with us. This is the best drag and drive event we've ever done. And we've done quite a few. I am not exhausted as I usually am, so having a great time. You mustn't be drinking as much beer as Harry. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I could ever drink as much beer as Harry or half of you guys. So I was saying earlier to my friend, the, the Australians do not go thirsty. That is for sure. <laughs> Thanks for getting us here alive, Lurch. Easy as that. Um, the River Park Motel still? Uh, we're across the road pulling a car apart in the vacant lot. Yeah. Oh, okay, no worries. So if, yeah, if you could bring the, the pizzas to here, that would be awesome. Yep, that's not a problem. I'll see you very soon. Day four. Day four was awesome. So uh, we already showed you we went to pubs and stuff like that. And now our uh, most spectacular entrant has uh, blown his diff up so now what you do in australia is when someone's fixing it a diff or something like that you give unhelpful advice till they finish fixing it like all night so if you pan around you'll see there's a lot of men here just about to help him it's all right the pizzas are on their fucking way they just give useless advice <laughs> uh, so we're going to do that for a couple of hours till the new diff turns up. Whoever brought the new diff, thank you very much. We put we put we put the call out. To, oh, right on cue. Look at that. <laughs> that wasn't even staged. That actually just happened. <laughs> um, so everyone's had a great day. Um, I think AJ is the only one that's broken something, and someone's done a head gasket, I believe, the little Corolla. So uh, no 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 dead cars, which oh, is great. Oh, Bruce Bruce is on the truck, but we're going to show you what we can do for Bruce tomorrow because Bruce is a legend. He's driven. Probably oh, 2,000 k's, which is what? How many miles is that? A lot of miles. He's driven a long way, so I've got a special treat for Bruce tomorrow. He's going to be able to complete the week and our event compared to other events. Thank you. No worries, guys. Enjoy your night. Oh, and do me a solid. My son's channel is, um, or if you want, you want the videos are coming up both channels, but my son's channel is Hall Ass Garage. All you subscribers, if you go over, even if you don't watch our stuff, just subscribe just to pump his tyres up a bit, and uh, he'll be wrapped with that. <laughs> There's old stuff from Drag Week and Cheval, and it'll all make sense to you newcomers. So if you can do that, that'd be great. Thanks to all the sponsors, participants, all the little country towns we went to today. Um, thanks to law enforcement, a couple of people got pulled up. Pulled up. The law enforcement was cool, making sure everyone's having a good time, so we appreciate that. And uh, we'll see you back tomorrow at Heathcote for a big day of racing and some awards tomorrow night. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.